The topic of our today's tutorial is problem 10.4. The spring designed in problem 10.3 is to be used uh, upon which a static load of 130 Newton is applied. Perform a design assessment represented by equation 10.13 which is this equation and equations that are from 10.18 up to 10.21 if the spring is close to solid height. I have solved problem 10.3. If you want to see how it is solved, you can watch it from the playlist. I will provide you the link as well in the description and here in this problem we will assist that solution whether that solution was okay or there were some flaws that needed to be removed so the assessment of problem 10.3 is based on some equation one equation is this one and the other are the below equations and the second equation c is given that should be between 4 and 12 so what is c c is actually the ratio of the spring diameter to the wire diameter similarly the number of active coils should be between the this range and if it is so then the design will be satisfactory but we will also have to see other things as well for its complete satisfaction similarly the value of zeta should be greater than or equal to 0 0.15 now what is zeta actually zeta into f plus f f means f applied is equal to f solid this equation can be used to find out the value of zeta the design factor should be 1.2 or greater than 1.2 so to design a spring all of the above equations should be satisfied otherwise the design will not be solid safe in problem 10.3 number of effective coils were 13 and total coils were 14 the torsional yield strength was at 71.2 megapascal solid force was 167.9 newton now let's check whether the number of effective coils are in the range or not as an air should be between 3 to 15 so we are in the range because in our case it is 13 the value of c for problem 10.3 was 11.4 so it is in the range of 4 to 12 so c is also okay for this problem l naught was 162.8 millimeter and l critical was 149.9 millimeter so c value and an a value are okay for this problem now let's calculate the value of the zeta which is equal to fs divided by f minus 1 fs is 167.9 newton and static load f1 is 130 so putting the values it will give you 0 0.29 which is greater than 0 0.15 so this is also okay for this problem now let's find out the shear stresses produced in the spring due to the static load 130 newton for which this equation is used and we have already derived it in theory lecture in problem 10.3 kb value was 1.117 f1 is 130 and spring mean diameter was 28.5 the wire diameter was 2.5 so putting all these values we will get 674 megapascal so this will be the shear stress that will be produced in the spring if you exert 130 newton force on it now let's find out the factor of safety and it is given to be torsional yield strength divided by the shear stress produced in the spring so torsional yield strength is at 71.2 and st uh, shear stress is produced in the spring as 674 megapascal so factor of safety will be equal to 1.29 as an s should be greater than 1.2 so again the design is okay up till now now let's find out the solid shear force that will be produced if you force the spring to become solid so tau s divided by tau 1 will be equal to fs divided by a whole divided by f1 divided by a a and a will get cancelled out each other so tau s divided by tau 1 will be equal to fs divided by f1 as tau 1 is 674 megapascal and fs was 167.9 newton and f1 is given to be 130 newton so putting all these values you will get tau s is equal to 870.5 megapascal now let's take the ratio of uh, ssy and tau s and you can see that they are almost equal to each other so their ratio will be equal to 1 so you should keep in mind that if you bring this spring to closure means if you be make it closed then the stress is produced and the spring will be equal to the torsional yield strength so the spring may fail so this is not okay keep in mind that the ratio of ssy and tau should be equal to or greater than design factor and as you see the spring length l naught is greater than uh, l critical so there will be buckling in the spring so this is also not okay for us so in the design there are two things that are making the spring spring unsafe so to ensure the safety you should not bring it to the closure and second thing is to avoid the buckling and for that you will have to operate it over a rod let's say this is a rod and this is the spring you will have to put this rod inside this spring like this another way is to take a hollow cylinder and put the spring inside that cylinder 
so this method will also resist the buckling